My first acting piece was a monologue that I did with DJ Kurz, who is the creative artistic director at Deaf West Theater and director Wayne Bett Jr., who was co-founder for a company called Convo. I fell in love with acting right then and there. The passion was in my blood. It was really the beginning of acting for me, a beautiful journey and a beautiful disaster. A beautiful disaster appeared when I discovered the issues of race in Hollywood, the lack of representation of BIPOC with disabilities on the screen and stage, which made me feel that I wasn't really valued because of the dark color of my skin and my disability as a deaf woman. In looking back, I questioned my appearance, my looks. I would look in the mirror and see myself even just the other day. I would see an alien, a dark skinned woman with big hair, full lips, big eyes. I stared at that reflection for a very long time and I truly didn't re I truly realized that I didn't see anyone like myself on the screen or on stage. I don't fit the image or narrative that Hollywood has standardized. Representation on the screen is so important. It's important for our black youth, especially our black girls and our black deaf girls, our black girls with disabilities to see themselves on the screen. When they watch TV or films, theater, play video games, and they see themselves. I visited an elementary school that had a lot of deaf and that has a deaf and hard of hearing program in Harbor City. There were mostly black deaf girls. I remember walking into the classroom and all of them coming up to me, giving me a huge hug. They were so happy. They were so engaged and just full of joy. They knew that I saw them for who they were. And that really is a day I'll never forget. That gave me the fuel to work harder in Hollywood for myself and for them. When Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales was released, so many people fell in love with Haley Cooper, which is the black deaf artist in the video game. Black and brown people sent me messages of love for Haley. I decided to change my inner narrative of feeling like an alien, of feeling different, of not fitting the standard. When I looked in the mirror, I said, I am beautiful. I am a gem. I am grateful for my existence. Most importantly, I'm talented. And for the first time in my life, I truly believe it. That's why I'm here, to continue to work, to act, to write, and to share stories through filmmaking. The Politician was my first role on television as the principal of a high school. I was beyond excited. I was in shock and celebrating. I worked with my phenomenal voice coach, Ellen, for this particular role. And what a remarkable experience working on the set of The Politician. Wow. I worked with a phenomenal cast and crew. 
I have to relay this experience. One time, there was a night scene where my character had to start walking because Ben Platt's character was going to be chasing behind me. But I couldn't hear the cue because the interpreter was behind. It was a wide shot. So we were trying to figure out how are we going to resolve this. The DP, director of photography, came up to me and said, all right, this is what we're going to do. I have a flashlight. I'm going to wave the flashlight. And when I do that, that's your cue to start walking. And I thought, <laughs> that was wonderful. It was a perfect solution. There was no communication barrier. That's what, there is always a way. There is always, always a way. While there are many good moments that have happened in my life, there is a constant reminder of being black in society. Being a black woman, layered onto that, being a black deaf woman. When I wake up in the morning, I'm happy, I'm safe in my own home. However, when I need to go do simple things such as go to the post office or go to the grocery store, there's a lot of nerves attached to that. because of how some people out there look at me because I don't fit the stereotype of a typical black woman. People look at me and say, oh, okay, we understand you're first generation here. That explains why you're that way. Or other people just look at me as if you don't belong here. I can't believe that I try to convince myself to bring my husband with me everywhere I go just so I can be safe because he's a white man. And it's not true. We are not safe. We're not accepted for having this beautiful skin. It is a constant reminder. My world crumbled May 25th of 2020 on that day where we all witnessed the murder of George Floyd. My heart just couldn't grasp the feelings of despair and a flood of flashbacks of injustice that I've endured all of my life without even realizing it started to appear and flash in my mind. From those feelings and flashbacks, Am I Next was born. Am I Next is about our Black Deaf community. Am I Next is a constant question in the back or front of our minds. Will I be next to be shot? Will I be the next to be pulled over and brutally beaten? Being Black Deaf can easily cause police officers to raise their temper or become frustrated because they don't understand the communication barrier. 
as an advocate, I will do anything to convey stories through our hearts. And no one can take that from me. Am I next? will become an actual exhibit at the National Life Museum at Gallaudet University, where we will showcase the storytelling of our history, greatness, struggles, celebration, and the future of our Black deaf community. Gallaudet University is the only deaf university in the world, where 2,000 deaf and hard of hearing students attend to attain their degrees in a signing environment. We want the world to learn about our deaf culture as well as our de black deaf history. We exist, we matter, our hearts are full, our hearts have stories to share. We hope for people to truly be open, both mind and heart, to accepting our existence. I want to thank the Makers community for having me here to share my story. This platform is extremely unique. It's touched my heart to express my being to you. It's such an honor to be able to have a voice and have that voice heard to share what my heart and my thought, thoughts are. So I'm truly grateful and out of an abundance from my heart, thank you for this opportunity and thank you all of you for listening to my story. <laughs>